<coughs> Hello. All right. Second lesson, the third unit on general spots and analytics. And we're going to just do a little soccer on a tiny note on Olympics, which really is not very satisfactory. I'm, they ought to be doing more. And um, I'm, of course, Jeffrey Fox, the instructor, and we're in the Big Data Applications and Analytics course in the data science curriculum. And I say, this we're going to do soccer. We'll have a little note about tracking players and balls, and uh, an even tr more trivial note on the on something the Olympics are doing. All right, so this was from uh, the um, presentation on soccer from an overview. And this, this actually is from somebody from the soccer field who was spending most of the, time, the presentation explaining why uh, analytics was misleading. Namely, uh, maybe it's nothing to do with the player's ability. It's their value to motivate other players. Uh, that reminds me of when I went to school. I was told to learn Greek because it was good for me. Not because it would actually help me. To, this was ancient Greek, not modern Greek. And um, of course, we had lots of Latin by default at that time. And uh, Greek was meant to be the next thing to train your mind. So maybe, you know, qualitative issues are important, but maybe they're overstated at the time. Uh, time. And here um, we have this statement that if the player ain't going to play properly, then there's no point in having a lot of data. It's not obviously correct. Probably the data will tell you whether they're not ready. So I think this is a pretty bad presentation, and uh, maybe that's why soccer is not, points out soccer doesn't have a big impact of analytics. Uh, humans are not rational. Humans don't take risks, and under pressure humans will fail. Wow, this is getting pretty philosophical. Um, I don't think this has much to do with sports analytics, but um, it's certainly true that analytics do not explain the results. They can, however, give a statistical um, analysis of the average result of a particular player. Whether it's because that player is not rational or is very risk averse, that's an interpretation of the data. And here is um, actually a result from um, UK um, uh, O2 is a UK, I think, mobile phone. Um, Network, and here we have the Premier League, the top league of soccer in England, and we have West Brom, uh, West Brom, I think it's W West Bromwich Albion's playing the Southampton, which is often a strong team, and uh, actually Southampton lost here, and it gives you the type of visual display that is actually common in a lot of uh, U.S. Tele television or the um, Let's call it media these days, because now you play your television with uh, uh, on your on your cell phone and things. Do you not? So these these give you um, locations of the players and things like that. And um, here's one. Foster's the goalkeeper here, and 22 and 20. They don't. They're not determined here. 21 is Malumbu. Is 21. Okay, so this shares that the general infrastructure for doing analytics and informatics is uh, permeating soccer, but as I say, it does not appear to have these dramatic, exciting um, uh, productivity pr predictions that as we now we see in baseball and have seen actually for some time in baseball. It says that field is really very innovative. Because although there are some special features, and I pointed out soccer's harder, because I mean, if the ball, I know where the ball is, maybe it's here. There are lots of players who are connected with that ball. And when, that, when you pass the ball, it can actually pass the territory of a lot of players. So it's uh, very complicated uh, to analyze each activity in, in soccer. Here's a note which is well, slightly um, curious, namely, there is an article in March from 2013, uh, f February, and it's about the cat so-called catapult monitors, which are 
monitoring uh, using the global navigation satellite system. They monitor the position of the ball. So instead of playing with ordinary balls, you play with balls which have um, these monitors built in. And you can see the so-called smart ball it has a tiny sensor on the ball and GPS trackers on the players, and it gives you sensors which um, track what's going on. Notice there's this interesting tension between video, where you use image processing to find the players and find the ball. That's what sports vision uses. But that's actually in a case where the ball is very clean. In soccer and other, especially rugby, when it disappears under a scrum of people, uh, the ball's position is slightly non-trivial and not so easily done from the video. But anyway, there was a claim that it was going to be trialed in Australian football, but I found a later article which said the trial was canceled. They didn't actually tell me what was going on. So here we have the ball sensors, here we have the player sensors. And this is a classic type of um, tracking everything about the game. And this is obviously going to get, uh, whether it's done by the Non-intrusive non thing, uh, intrusive thing, non-intrusive thing. The uh, video, or the intrusive thing of actually adding sensors to everything under the sun, it's going to happen. Now we have to translate that into action items and then analytics. Here is um, another example from Adidas. Uh, another such system. More sensors. These sensors actually, these Adidas sensor measure not just position, but also uh, speed and what location is position, acceleration, and that's done on the shirts. And you have, of course, various analysis systems. Um, so these are, so I think this system is still embryonic. It is not, I mean, one interesting thing about Major League Baseball is they employ. They deployed sports vision everywhere. All ball clubs had sports vision. So the, that is a very professional organization which is at the leading edge of analytics. And it appears the other fields have become, are not at that level. All right, so finally we have a start not in my opinion, uh, unfortunately, small discussion of the Olympics. The only slide I found on the Olympics was about their use of social media to track fans, and uh, their social media site was meant to find gymnasts and make them into aerial spear, skiers. Um, so, and the and so they were effectively tra finding talented people by getting them to uh, submit their uh, capabilities through a Facebook site. So that's okay. I don't think it's the it's not using any machine learning or anything. It's just using uh, modern social media to reach a broad audience. So that's the end of this lesson. Of uh, again, I say these lessons have a feel. In, in Unit Three, are all somewhat qualitative, and that's the nature of what where they where the use of um, analytics is in these other fields. Thank you very much. This is Jeffrey Fox signing off.